Hawks lose 4-2 to two to the Minnesota Wild in a interesting game where the Hawks, frankly, they should have won the game. And frankly, it should have been three goals for the Blackhawks, but the refs decided to blow a, a blow a call, basically. Jonathan Tays had a goal in tonight's game, and the Revs waved it off. This game, frankly, the Hawks were the better team in the first two periods of play, and then first 10 minutes of the third period of play. Then the Wild took charge, and it was a wild spin to the finish. Alex Stalock played well tonight for your Chicago Blackhawks. He looked good. He was. He was moving the puck well. I was even thinking, if the Hawks get the Wild to pull their netminder, I think Stalock could have scored a goal. That's how he was playing the puck, moving the puck down the ice, getting the, the Hawks on a rush, and then I think Stalock could have had a goal if of uh, the Wild were at a point where they needed to pull Gustafson. This was a good game by the Blackhawks, and it still helps them in the tank standings. They stay in 31st in the standings, which is a okay thing to say because at this point in the season, we only have two games remaining tomorrow night against Pittsburgh and Thursday night back home in the United Center against the Flyers. And I will be at that game. It will be amazing to be there. So let's look at the stats of the game, shall we? Shots on net, 22, 41. Yes, 41 for your Chicago Blackhawks. Face-off percentage, 35.6% to the Hawks, 64.4% at the dock. Power play, 0 for 2 for the Wild. 0 for 3 for the Hawks. But frankly, there shouldn't have been a third power play because Jonathan Tays had a goal that the Revs decided to say the Wild touched the puck. No, no, I'm sorry. I have to say it. It's a BS call. The Hawks were controlling. Wild may have touched the puck, but they really didn't control it to touch the puck. So... Shots per period to really show the Hawks were the better team. 8 to 11 for the Hawks in the first period. 5 to 22. Yes, I repeat, 22 for your Chicago Blackhawks in the second period and 9 to 9 in the third period. It was an insane game. The Hawks were the better team. They looked like the better team. There was a fight in tonight's game midway through the game in the third period. But we saw a lot of adversity. The Hawks looked good after sending down Lucas Reichel and Alex Vlasic today. They basically went ahead and just went for playing rebound hockey where they're shooting the puck on net going for rebounds and that's how they scored their goals so look at the goals of the game shall we in the first period it was the wild who got on the board first but the hawks came buzzing they were moving the puck well getting the shots off but the wild go down the ice and while well, at 12 32 in the first period matt boldy scores his 31st of the season assisted by johansson and Anderson to make it a one nothing game for Minnesota. But the Hawks were able to answer. Answer a little bit later, but they came back and played hard. The Wild had nothing to um, keep momentum on their side. The Hawks were moving the puck well, getting momentum, getting shots off, on Gus, off of Gustafson's pads, tried for chances, and well, they get one. At 18-11, in the first period, scored by number 15, Joey Anderson. His sixth goal of the season, assisted by number 14, Boris Kachuk. To get this game all tied up at one apiece with just two minutes remaining in the first period of play. This goal by Joey Anderson leads to a... 
little bit of a carom up front of the net as the puck gets loose. Uh, Anderson shoots the puck onto the pads of Gustafson. It looked like the puck did go off the stick of Jujar Kara. And I on and originally it, they were giving the goal to Jujar. Kara tipped looked like he tipped the puck and he might get assist, but then Joey Anderson does poke the puck through and get the Hawks on the board. It's one apiece. We take that one. A tied game into the second period of play. And into the second period of play, the Hawks do a lot of the same, but even better in the second. They were keeping the Wild to the boards and not letting them get shots off. The Hawks came out buzzing. They were moving the puck well, getting the opportunities off. And well, at 2.23 in the second period, scored by number 24. Andres Bjork, his first of the season, first as a Chicago Blackhawk, assisted by number 53, Buddy Robinson, and number 89, Andreas after to see you to give the Hawks a 2-1 lead two minutes into the second period of play. Hawks go on a two-on-one break. Uh, Robinson shoots the puck right onto the pads for a rebound, over, and it goes to the stick of Bjork, and Bjork buries it, and the Hawks take the lead. It's a one-goal lead, but the Hawks could have easily come out of this second period with a couple more goals. That's how lethal their shots were for rebound play. The Hawks took advantage of the Wild and slow play and not having their best players out on the ice. And, well, that Bjork uh, after the CU Robinson line, oddly, was one of the best lines of the night tonight. That's how good they were playing, which is shocking to say because two of the guys don't play often enough. And um, one of the guys is our uh, one of our leading point getters who's trying to get 20 goals this season. But this was a good play by the Hawks. The Hawks get on the board. They lead in the UC over the Minnesota Wild. And they take that one goal lead into the third period of play. Where into the third period of play we go, the penalties start getting called. No penalties so far. And then we get penalties called. Hawks were the first team to serve a PK. They kill it off. Then the Wild get called for a pow- penalty, but the Hawks are controlling play mid and controlling play well. They got the opportunities, moving the puck well back and forth, back and forth around a diamond, basically. And the Hawks were able to set up and score. Jonathan Tease on the doorstep buries one, but then the refs. Go to the corner and talk with each other and claim the Wild got control of the puck and delay penalty was over, leading to a Hawks power play. So they waved off the captain's goal and we have to go to a power play. The Hawks power play, not so much to come from it. They were moving the puck well. Got a couple shots off, but didn't do much after that. Then the Wild are buzzing. And, well, Hawks on another power play after a couple penalties were called. And, well, Hawks on the power play. Wilds were able to answer. At 14 minutes in the third period, Marcus Johansson scores his 18th of the season for a shorthanded goal, unassisted, to make it a 2-2 game. It's tied up now. It was a shorty given up by the Hawks. And then, the just two minutes later, Johansson scores again to make it his 19th of the season, a second of the night, assisted by Boldy, to make it a 3-2 wild lead. Their first lead, the second lead of the night, it's now Minnesota looks like they're going to win this. 
And yes, they do. Because at 1859 in the third period, Gustav Nyquist, I forgot he got traded there, scored his 11th of the season, assisted by Ryan Hartman to end this game off at 4-2. The Hawks played well. They should have won it, frankly, but they do stay in the hunt to try and get Connor Bedard. Well, best odds for Connor Bedard because currently in the standings by point percentage, the Hawks do move down to 32nd in the league at point percentage with a 350 on the point percentage. Then it's uh, the Blue Jackets who played one game less has a 354 on point percentage. And then the Ducks with a 362. So this helps a little bit in the standings. They move down to 32nd for a night because the Blue Jackets, I do believe, play again tomorrow, which is an interesting one. You need to keep an eye out on that score because the Hawks will be playing at 630 against Pittsburgh. And the Blue Jackets will be playing at 6 o'clock against the Flyers, which the Flyers have not been playing good hockey as of late. So that could be one to keep an eye out. So down in the comments down below, I want to hear what your thoughts were on tonight's action. And thank you for watching the broadcast. Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And most of all, the season's almost done. And let's go Hawks.